Let me hear you say crooks, yeah! Crooks, yeah! Let me hear you say crooks, yeah! Crooks, yeah! Crooks, yeah! Podcast. Crooks, crooks! Bam, here we are, Crux, yeah. What's up? What's Back up, again. Man? Can't stop us unless you cut my power off I thought I and I get you fired that. and I lose all my money and I can't do this anymore. Then you could stop me. But if you don't do all those, a lot of things that you could do, I'm still here. And I'm here with my boy, Mike Bradshaw. What's going on, man? What's up, bro? I thought I told you that we won't stop us bad boy for life. Yeah, that's right, dude. <laughs> Shaq's in that music video. Oh, in the Bad Boy for Life video? Yeah, dude. In the Bad Boys for Life, dude. I think he's in at the end. I think he is. Yeah. Maybe. I just remember. I know he's in there. I remember the motorcycles, and they moved into that suburban neighborhood and took it over, and I just wanted to. I lived in the suburban neighborhood, and I, I, I wanted to live that dream. Mm. But we, it was all black people in my suburban neighborhood, so it didn't work that way. Yeah. We, we yeah. were there together. Yeah, that's interesting, man. Because <laughs> normally the suburbs are filled with white people that want to be black. Nah, I, had, I lived in the... The blackest of suburbs. Yeah? Yeah. There was like, in my high school, there was like probably, out of I, like a graduating class was like 700. Mm-hmm. At, at the time I was there, it's bigger now. And mm-hmm. we had like 25 white people uh-huh. in, in the entire high school. Yeah, yeah. I knew them all, personally. Yeah. Hated every single one of them equally. Nah, they're nah, cool. Just, <laughs> nah, they're, they're all cool. They're all cool. That's cool, man. Um, but the funny you want to hear the funniest part about the city I, I grew up in? It was all white when I first got there. Mm. They all left in one summer. Yeah, one summer. I'm not even kidding. Wow, dude, man. it's crazy. They found out there was new subdivisions being built. They're like, man, our property value is going to go down. We're getting out of here. Oh my god, <laughs> dude, that's so funny, dude. Well, I wanted to have you by, man, because um. Uh, thanks for coming by because I remember like when I first started coming to uh, Hyenas Dallas, you were one of the people that kind of like was really nice. She came up to me, introduced, she's like, hey, I'm Mike, you know, really, really, uh, you know, really, really nice. And uh, that was cool, man. Because you know how it is like when you're when you're brand new, mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, you feel like you don't fit in and you, and you don't know who to talk to. And, and we're sitting around waiting for so long to go up and do comedy for fucking three minutes. You know what I mean? You sit there quiet. Don't yeah. say anything to anybody. Just in the corner for, for three hours. Ow, we're waiting for hours a lot of the time. So, I mean, dude, it's a lot of time that you're just sitting there and fucking doing nothing. So, it's really cool that you, you know, I appreciate that, man. That was really cool uh, that, you know, you're one of the first people to, to introduce yourself to me. So that was really nice, and uh, <clears throat> really glad to have you over. But yeah, man, um, you asked me before like what we we're going to talk about, and we we're going to talk about whatever, dude. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but like, uh, you you didn't go to uh, Fort Worth last night, right? No, you didn't I didn't. Go to the, Why did okay. something crazy happen? No, no, I just didn't see you there. I went to the comedy arena. Mm. Uh, I just it's uh, because because I was going to see Spider Man, but I still uh, want to get right. my jokes in because you know me, you know me. I'll work three jobs and then go do jokes at one in the morning. Yeah. yeah so yeah. um, I want to still get my jokes in. So I was like, I can get the comedy arena, and because of how they draw, I can get out of there by ten ten mm, o'clock and get okay. to the eleven thirty show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, man. Yeah, and then um, you did how long ago did you do that show? Did you do a bunch of shows or a show with uh, Trey Mack? Uh, I've done two so far. I opened for Trey Mack um, at these colleges that uh, he gets booked at. Oh, okay. It's a new, a newish thing, but it's 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 going pretty well so far. Hell yeah! Yeah, I do like fifteen. He does like uh, 40, 45. You do? You can do fifteen? Yeah, that's fifteen. No, that's fifteen clean. I can do more than fifteen. Wow! How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, like a year and three months. Okay. okay. No, no, like. Uh, you're in four months, I guess. Okay, okay, fuck. I didn't realize it was that much longer than me because I'm I'm almost exactly on the seventh of this month was six months for me. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. um, that's cool, man. I didn't realize it was like uh like a year more than a year more than me. Um, that's cool, man. So you got fifty. You did fifteen, and then he did because he said I asked him because I helped with production on uh when he was on Eddie's show in October, mm-hmm. and uh, he I, he just dropped in and did ten minutes. But mm-hmm. I asked him how long he had. He's like, he's like about an hour. Yeah, um, yeah, he can he's go. Ama- he's he's amazing. He's good. He's awesome. He's so good. <laughs> that guy's good. He does he's so miss. good. But he's also been doing comedy for like nine years. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what he said. You know, uh, the funniest part. You know how we met? Hmm. Being in hyenas late at night. 
Uh, and I would be hosting because nobody would want to host. Yeah. And I was like, let me try to learn. And he just saw me hosting. They were putting him in the late box. He just moved here and they didn't, you know how it is. You know, you know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You know, he's really good. So I'm just like, who's this guy murdering down here? <laughs> yeah. He stepped in. You're like, holy fuck. Yeah. I'm like, this, this, this guy's. No, dude, that guy's so good. Guy. Yeah. He, um, I was a DCC, you know, doing the open mic. He just dropped in at the very tail end. Um, I was on standby. He went up after me. I mean, I saw him do a full set at the show, like I said, but mm-hmm. then I saw him just doing the open mic too. And um, he's so fucking, and he's so cool too. Like, yeah, he's so relaxed. He's really just, good. His style is good. But I mean, as a person, he's just so nice. Oh, yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he's a, he's a good man. He's a good guy. Like after afterwards, I asked him, was that new stuff or old stuff? He's like, no, those are old jokes. Um, he did like the whole like, uh, like when you talk, tell when you compliment like an old black guy on something, he does the backup walk or that, whatever. He yeah, did that whole one, bit. Yeah. That was great. That was the first time I saw it. And uh, he's like, no, those are old. I just do them. He's like, you know how it is. You got to do something so you can remember it. And I'm like, dude, this guy's been doing comedy so much longer than me. This guy's so much better than me. But he's treating me like I'm an equal. Yeah, he's really not cool. one of those people that, because you know a lot of, a lot, some people, are, Sometimes. They, they have that, the air about them yeah. as they're, as they're talking to you, even they'll, they'll walk up to you. They like they talk to you from a. They try to talk to you from a pedestal. I'm yeah. like, we're we're all people, man. We're yeah. all people doing our thing. Yeah, and he's really cool. Yeah, about it. I feel like that that whole classic thing, like with comedy, so far from what I've seen, rings true, man. Where, um, like if someone's really good, mm-hmm. they're really cool, and then if yeah. they suck, that's why they're a dick because yeah. they suck. You Even know if know they mean? have success. Cause yeah, that's true. Cause yeah. you can you can not be the funniest and have success because you work really hard and know the right people. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about like how much hustle you have. I think that's a big factor for yeah. sure. Um, but yeah, man. What? So what's your? Because we've never really talked about it. We've just kind of like bullshitted about whatever was going on around us or whatever. Who who were you like? Uh, so a year and a half ish ago, like when you started, three, year three months because I started in September. I thought about it. Got it, got it. Year, so year and three months or whatever ago, like who are you? Like who are the people that like were like your influences? Where you're like, fuck, dude, I want to be like that guy, or I want to, or whoever. You know, as I started going the mics or like no, before, like you're, and, before you started, and you're like before you thought, uh, man, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can give it a shot. Who are the people that you like loved, worshipped? You know what I mean? Like, okay, etc. So I'm weird in this way. I'm not like I got asked one time in like sixth grade, who is your role model? It was like for opening the question, and the teacher had to call me in because I was like, I don't. I wrote on the paper, I don't have a role model. I don't believe though you should idolize any one individual. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I could take a little bit from a lot. Of I like wrote. I wrote this like long paragraph to this simple question we were only supposed to answer two sentences yeah. to. Uh, I say all that to say like Dave Chappelle. Um, Jamie Fox. Uh, weirdly enough, the one that really got me to want to go and do it, like actually like leave in the house and do it, was Tony Baker. Uh, if you're familiar, with I'm not him. familiar with Tony Baker. Yeah, Tony Baker. Uh, I saw him at Arlington Improv. And I had seen him uh, from on the internet stuff. Uh, he does the animal voiceovers, but he's actually he's a good stand up. He's a good stand up comic, really good stand up comic. So he tours uh, all over. And he was at Arlington Improv, and I, I went there and saw the show. And uh, I, I think like a week later, I went to uh, Stomping Grounds. Yeah, and tried and, and did like a tried to do a, did an improv thing there, and was like, all right, I want to do this. And then and then the Pangea happened. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everything right. shut down. Everything shut down. And so, dude. like, once stuff started opening back up, I started going. Yeah, and there we are. Mm. that's crazy. No, dude. Oh, Bernie Mac too. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. A okay. Really good one. A big one. I, I was just gonna say, dude. Uh, Jamie Foxx, I feel is so underrated in terms yeah. of comedy. I, I think it's just because he's so multi talented that people forget that he also does amazing stand-up comedy because he's like a good actor. Yeah. He's a good singer. He does everything. He does it all. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's easy to forget, dude. Like if you haven't seen I Might Need Security <laughs> or some something else that he's done, dude, he's so good. And man. the fact he's that he's so he can fucking do, good. He can do bits that nobody else can do right? because he can sing and sing. he can actually act and do impressions. And he's <laughs> amazing at impressions. Dude. So, he's yeah. so good, bro. You're right. Dude, I watched I Might Need Security. I was like, holy fuck. This shit's so good, bro. Yeah. This shit's so good. Um, so my thing, one of my main 
inspiration is kind of like that whole kind of thing where it's like, dude, I want to try it. Like, obviously there's tons of fucking comedians that I think are amazing and stuff that I love that I'm a fan of. But like one that really inspired uh, me personally uh, on, my t- on my top three list is Daniel Tosh. And I feel like just like Jamie Foxx, I feel like he doesn't get a- enough credit. Like he's so underrated because people don't realize what a great standup comedy comedian he is because Tosh.0 is so big. You yeah, know they're I mean? used to the other media forms, so they're not. That happens to a lot of people. You get identified as, as one media, and, and people won't take your other things as serious or, yeah. or you know, they won't, they won't critically consider them the same way. You know? Yeah, no, totally, man. Like, so I feel like Jamie Foxx is in that. Obviously, they're totally different styles and yeah. totally different levels and all that shit, but I feel like they're in the same boat in that they're kind of don't get a lot of credit for oh, yeah. how much how good they are versus like how how, how much uh, people recognize them as a stand up comedian because mm-hmm. dude I I watched so I, I was just talking about this with Mike Tribby I watched uh, Daniel Tosh completely serious his first big special from like 2007 or whatever I watched it for the first time in like 10 years the other day mm-hmm. like a month or two ago and um, I had my just because now that I do comedy like seriously like I, I pay attention to shit more because we're doing yeah, it every night course. now so now you can now when you watch somebody do a special you look at it in a whole different way like how are they holding the mic what's their style what's their cadence how are their transitions how long have they been on stage so far you know you start mm-hmm. you analyze it like that right so that was the first time I watched this special with that lens and I'm sitting there with my stop just for fun I pulled out my stopwatch on my phone and I'm watching dude the first five minutes of him doing this hour mm-hmm. do he it's insane. I'm like, God damn, dude. He busted out like 20 plus jokes. Yep. You know what I mean? It was like fucking crazy. I'm like, God damn, dude. It's been five minutes and he's already fucking lit this shit up. That's crazy. You it's see the rolling. experience. Yep. Yeah, you see the years showing. The years yeah. are showing, you know? And it's it's amazing, you know? Because we know, we know how hard it is to come up with five minutes. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Trust me. <laughs> I didn't have a. I started in September. I didn't have a good five minutes until like I don't know February, right? <laughs> and then uh, I don't know if you ever listened, but Alonzo Bowden did my podcast um, just because I've known him for a long time, mm-hmm. and he did my pod. And he said, if you come out of your first year of doing comedy and you have a really good five minutes, he's like, then you're doing the right thing. That's what he said. He's mm-hmm. like, you're on the right track if you got a solid five after a year. So he's like anything above. He didn't say this, but then you can you can conclude that if you have a solid five minutes before a year, then you're ahead of the game. Mm. You know, based on what he was saying. So, that's good. Yeah, that's what he was saying. I mean, he's been a professional fucking comedian for over twenty years. Yeah, no, I, and that makes sense. Like, I don't know. I never tried to put time lines on myself. I just always tried to. I like started with one mic a week. Uh, and I, just, I built up as much as I can. I started just getting minutes in and writing and, and working on it and, and building up and <laughs> getting what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm in that weird stage right now that I've been doing it six months where I have shit that works. Like I have five minutes, you know, that's really solid, you mm-hmm. know, and then I could do 10, you know, with stuff that's like, you know, still good. But like you, you see me like I'm at that stage now where I'm going through that growing pain thing of like I have stuff that works, but I'm. Try, I'm forcing myself to try new shit and fail, you know, right. and bomb. And like you see all the, like you get to the open mic, you're like, oh, there's actual humans in here. There's like, yeah. oh, there's like 20 people in here. <laughs> oh, do I, I was going to do this new joke I wrote. I don't know if it's so good. Let's, I know they'll laugh at this. Can I, can I squeeze it? And then you try to squeeze it and then you don't have time for the new joke. Yeah. <laughs> I've done, dude, I, or like, I'm like, man, I'm going to fucking just take a big risk and fucking just do all new material tonight and then i'm like oh no i find a reason like all oh, these people are here that guy's never seen my set before it's here and i want him to think i'm good so then i get scared and i fucking fall back on my shit that i know that works and then i feel like shit after i'm like god yeah. damn why did i do that you know what i mean yeah so you know i'm at the, i'm in that weird stage right now where it's like dude i gotta fucking force I, myself i feel you bro i guess because i can i can be that stage you remember i don't know if you were there that time in hyenas where i skipped I skipped like you around. Physically skipped. I skipped the around the no. entire room. I've seen wire, you dance. Wireless you mic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. skipped around the entire room. I skipped around the entire moon, room because <laughs> the bit was that skipping should be a more acceptable form of bipedal motion. I completely stand behind this statement. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. It should. It's fucking whimsical. <laughs> it's energy's conserving, and you get so much further with just these bounds. But I'm a six foot two black man. They don't want me skipping around here. You know. Yeah, that's so funny, dude. <laughs> oh. 
actually on the note of last night, there was something not crazy or dramatic that went down, but there was something funny as fuck that happened. Um, and that was, so Eric, you know, the general manager, um, he, uh, <laughs> He he was the, the, like a bunch of people were dragging the trash cans out from the kitchen, like out to the back, you know, mm-hmm. and um, they had to go through the open, you know, the red room to do that. So he was dragging the last pair of trash cans out, you know, that were filled with beer oh. bottles and stuff. He had to drag them through the red room and he got a look or a comment from the comic that was on stage performing at the time so dude he fucking backs them up and redrags them dude because that guy was trying to complain about it and then he fucking did it again and then he walked back and redragged him across the fucking floor because this is a tile floor for everybody who's listening doesn't understand this is like a yeah. small room it's where the open mic is a hyenas fort worth and it's the red room so it's a small room awesome room fucking love that place but very romantic it's intimate, it's a yeah. it's a dead room it's very ins- well you know it's it's sound it's it's wired up for comedy man it, it's fucking you can hear every little if someone's on the mic there you can hear every little whisper every little thing because it's it's designed for comedy it's a it's a padded room yep it's a basement. so when you drag some trash cans across it is loud you know what i mean off the, across the tile floor so this dude was like basically like oh fuck you you're gonna try to be a fucking comedian about this well fuck you i'm, I'm working so he drug my then dude then he went up and fucking got on the light he stood on a fucking chair and he turned the light on that illuminates the stage <laughs> he turned the light off I, not on but he turned it off dude so <laughs> he turned the dude's light off and then he takes one of the trash cans and puts some on put it on stage in front of the dude <laughs> god <laughs> <laughs> that's and it, everybody was rolling bro I'm everybody was hurt. laughing their yeah. ass off audience comics every way dude oh yeah that's it was so fucking funny dude so yes that is something you missed that was the second I'm about to say, you're like, i was like i was like did i miss anything and he's yeah. like no you miss anything yeah no. i forgot I just forgot. the entire incident but yeah uh, that was fucking incident. hilarious bro I guess I guess because it was nonviolent, I didn't miss anything. Yeah, because I was thinking like, well, what happened? There was drama. Did someone fight? Because we know there's been a lot of that bullshit going around, <laughs> like different fucking digital fights and physical <laughs> fights. And you know what's weird about those? Mm. I keep being at the lo- like I keep being with the people in that in the location of these altercations, like right before Me they too, happen. Dude. Me too. Like, I like leave and then I get on uh, Facebook, man. Hey, I got shot in the face. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Here's a picture. Dude, 100%. <laughs> One of those altercations we're talking about, man. Dude, literally, when that dude posted, like, when these two comics supposedly got in a fight or one of them got beat up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Dude, literally, when the guy who was trying to blow it up and post about it and stuff, mm-hmm. when he was posting his pictures and his video footage, supposedly, that he had, I was like, two minutes, I left. And thank God, because I don't want to be involved with any of that Thanks, shit. Yeah. Dude. So I, but you, and I'll tell you how I know, because dude, when I said bye and I walked away, the angle of the video footage, everybody's in the same fucking spot they were yeah, when I left. Yeah, because I, uh, I think it was the, the Dallas, the Dallas incident. The Dallas, the Dallas incident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, because we were both on stage right, kind of right before that. That's right. That's yeah, right. It was me and you and I got like, uh, me and like Caleb Piles is there too. Like we got yeah. off stage and I was like, all right, I, and I dipped that day. I went. Something told me like to to go fast. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have. I didn't say seventeen goodbyes like I normally do. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah some nothing told me anything i just got dumb lucky i just fucking was like yeah i'm tired i'm gonna leave now yeah. and dude literally like within the same boat as you a couple minutes later fucking thing thank god man because i don't want to be associated with yeah any i don't because i don't like i don't really like i don't like I, I, every time i like ignore it uh, whatever yeah it's like yeah so man, yeah it's been in i ain't in it you know yeah <laughs> And so I was on right after the whole trash can thing at Fort Worth. I was after he did the whole fucking Eric did that whole shit. That guy got off stage and then I went up um, and then I had to acknowledge it because obviously that was funny as fuck. So I was like fucking uh, I feel like if he put the trash can on stage when I was up, that would have been like a white trash intervention. Be like, hey, like this is this is who you are, bro. We're going to let you down lightly and let you know this is your identity. (laughs) And then. Then I tried a bunch of new shit and it fucking was half-assed and I fucking bombed, which is great because I, I was like, I'm going to try all new shit. I don't care. I'm not going to get scared. I'm going to follow through with it. And Facts. I did it. Half of it worked. Half of it was horrible, but I don't care because it was like me. Like that's oh, yeah. growth. That's growth, you know? So yeah, that that's, cool. that's one thing. A lot of it is is, is confidence, the stage presence. And right. if, when you're testing out new stuff, it's respecting the material uh, and the audience like giving it the the effort it deserves to actually 
see if you're, it's really working or not, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes you'll think something doesn't work, and it wasn't It wasn't that it doesn't work. It was the way that you did it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. And and the only way that you learn that or get better at it is you, you just keep doing it Facts. until you do it in the way that it works. That's 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 what I'm learning. But, yeah, man, fucking uh, – what uh, – so – Hey, did you always grow up like watching a lot of comedy and stuff? Or oh, yeah, I was gonna, I was actually gonna bring that back. I was really you, we're, we're on, we're on telepathy, man. <laughs> I was actually gonna swing that back around because comedy wise too, it's not a comic, but my dad, mm. like it's part of the reason I do comedy. Okay, uh, why? What do you mean? So what my dad did do comedy back in L.A. in oh, the okay. late eighties. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but he had to stop because he's married, had two young girls, and like in eighty nine and ninety in L A, he had to, you know, he had to get money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was what it was. Uh, but like, I live in a house like there's not. We make jokes at everything, like all the time. Like my grandma's funeral, hilarious. It was a, it was a fun experience. Yeah, he killed. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I wasn't even trying. I was, I was saying maybe he did some jokes. I don't know. No, well, it was just there's just it was just a funny experience. Just ladies singing gospel music with no actual music behind them. Just that's swear they were making up the song, man. Okay, everybody was going up there talking about how good she was at dominoes. Like when it's like the sixth person, it's like you know, a lot of brass y'all she kiss you on the forehead and she could play some bones. <laughs> you know, she would just pull up at the bus stop, be like, "What time your your bus get here? Nine thirty? Oh yeah, you got time to play, and she would literally pull out a folding table and play dominoes with these people. Mm. My grandma was a character, but <laughs> yeah, I mean the guns we found in her house. When, <laughs> after that, man. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we yeah he we he he has no filter. You've heard me say some random stuff. And mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. You meet my parents, man. It makes sense. Okay, interesting. I have a very. Yeah, I've always been. I've always made jokes. I can't help but make jokes. I made my first big joke at three but isn't it crazy how different uh i was just talking about this with mike tribby isn't it isn't it crazy how different that is like being telling jokes with your friends or with your family oh, or whatever versus being funny versus being funny on stage yeah yeah it's crazy how different it is right like uh kevin hart talks about that on uh his uh you're listening to comedy gold mines mm-hmm. he like talks about that when he's like dude when i started he's like i was always the funniest family member at the barbecue or whatever mm-hmm. and he's like but then when i got on stage yeah, you have to it has, cuz it has to be direct, on stage it has to be directed. Right. Uh it has to be organized. <laughs> you got to communicate it differently. Exactly. Yeah. You have to you have to you have to pro- you have to provide the context. Yeah. Uh, whether that be visually like with with your nonverbal or with or with the setup. So you have to, the context has to be provided. So like but in the context of your family or your friends or just your life in general you're you've built the context over years and years of situations and and things yeah yeah so yeah dude no totally and you, that's the cool thing and what i hear from veterans you know what i mean that have been doing comedy forever is just what i try to do what i'm trying to continue to do whether i do well or i don't do well or i'm trying mm-hmm. something new or whatever is um i'm just trying to stick to that whole that motto of like you just got to be honest like you have to Facts. be honest with the audience because mm-hmm. If, if they don't believe you, it doesn't even matter if what you're saying or the idea is kind of funny, they're not going to listen because mm-hmm. if they don't believe you, then it's not, they're not buying into it. Oh, yeah, you know what true. I mean? So like, I'm trying to do that as much as possible. Just try to do the on, like talk. Obviously everything that we say is not a hundred percent the what happened or the truth, but oh, it's the fact it's the, it, you're tying it into a piece of honesty though, yeah. you know, about who you are. You're making it so it, a, a piece of it at least is is you're telling it from your voice and i think when when people feel that mm-hmm. then they believe it and then that's why they'll laugh you know oh yeah because it's it's about it's about the relatableness it's about making the ridiculous relatable yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly dude um yeah i don't know i did public speaking too i think a lot as a kid so then that helped me learn how to do the stage part yeah i've always been not as a kid but like as i got like older yeah yeah. i've never had trouble going in front of a group of people or talking yeah i have a couple different personal advantages or like experience like some some uh some experience with that first one is just being in music right Mm -hmm. so i I, i've 
performed in front of people yeah. forever for a long time same countless times so that's that's fine um and then also uh i've been fucking sober for a long time i've been in aa for a long time so i've i've spoke you know i've done 40 minutes you know what i mean <laughs> it's talking you yeah know. it's talking it's honest talking yeah yeah uh you know 20 minutes 40 minutes 30 minutes you know whatever um in front of 100 people etc so yeah like that's fine i've mm -hmm. experience with doing that but it is i will say dude even if you do have experience doing something as somebody who has experience doing other art forms in front of people oh it's nothing it's nothing no. like doing it like until you actually not this. do it yeah yeah not it's, this. it's always it's, until you actually do it that's when you're like oh okay like you realize at least for me it's like the first time i feel like within the first two or three times you realize whether it's for you or not yeah uh based on how it makes you feel being oh yeah up there big time dude big time yeah. like and i was just talking like once again man like i've said this before but dude i just feel that's why i think stand-up comedy is so amazing and the people that are good at it and the people that do it are so amazing because you're getting up there man and there's nothing there's no Nothing show about it. there's no frills there's no fucking soundtrack there's no lines like yes you have bits that you have worked on and memorized but at the end of the day it's not like you're reciting lines in a play you don't have a scene partner you're not up there with someone else mm -hmm. uh there's no fucking trick music like it's just you with a microphone fucking entertaining people so you see somebody who's really good and it's like dude this guy's there this guy or girl like is painting this whole fucking picture and enter creating this whole world out of nothing dude just yeah. them standing up there with a microphone and painting all the that's fucking dude to me that's like god like that's like god level like that's amazing to Man, me you, you know how I mean? do you get up there you put the people in a little chariot you say let's go for a ride for however many minutes i yeah. got and then you get your light all right we're coming back to the station have a great on laugh and get off of here yeah <laughs> yeah dude no it's fucking it's crazy dude and uh and you like realizing like learning about it and realizing that even the people that are just like some of the greatest to ever do it mm -hmm. uh were human like have you seen that uh, the comedy store documentary at all mm -mm. dude that's really crazy to watch because they talk about richard Pryor. yeah uh, after he was famous after he was big he would go on really late like after yeah. the end of the show and he would go up there for an hour and just fucking bomb because oh, yeah. he was trying new stuff he's working stuff out or he'd go up there and he'd just be like and he would bomb for a while and then he'd just be like yeah i'm not funny tonight and then he would just leave yeah and comedians talk about like when they were new and they would walk in on one of those sets mm -hmm. and they'd be like this is richard Pryor. like this is the richard Pryor." yeah you know i mean, mean it's a it's uh, yeah that's one of the first things i think that's one of the first breakthroughs you get yeah as like mentally as a comic is like all right everybody in here it doesn't matter well one knowing even from an open mic who's good and who's not that's a that's a later one but the first breakthrough is that okay this is an open mic so i can't i have to take everything with a grain of salt in here i can't this is practice i can't hold this i can't hold these people with game standards you know i well, i think that's and and um yeah because i was talking about this with somebody else that's i feel like and i've done this i think mm -hmm. we all do this i'm just now starting to barely come out of this shell of doing this I think that's a new guy mistake. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To to watch an open mic performance and go, oh, this is how good or bad somebody. It's like, no, nah, dude, you don't understand. The most of these people, especially people that are seasoned, that've been doing comedy for years in here, they already have a set. Yeah, of these like are their free jokes. Twenty. <laughs> yeah, they got an hour. I mean, the, the, these people have shit that works already. They're trying new stuff, which is what you should be doing in here. You know what I mean? Like, you're, they're trying new stuff. That's why I've been really discipline myself to try to do as much new stuff as possible mm -hmm. as hard as that is because that's what this is you can't gauge an open mic performance that is somebody good or bad you got to watch a show to gauge that yep you know and and i think when you're new you think the open mic is the show you know what i mean it's not it's and not it's the not. show at all man it's <laughs> not it's not dude you know what i mean it's so so it's got a little bit of a ways to go guy yeah it's just so and i think we all do that we all assume like mm -hmm. when you're new you're like well let's see who's good and who's not it's like well, dude that doesn't that, you, you're not gonna see that tonight you know what i mean you're yeah. not really gonna see that you know right when i get there with the with the they bring like 30 people and then they don't realize that those 30 people are gonna have to sit there until 1 30 in the morning oh i know bro <laughs> that's the 
We be we, the rest of us are glad though. We're like, yeah. thanks, man. These are some. Hey, we're about to use these jokes on your on these people. I'm, I hope they're not joked out by the time you get. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> Lessons learned, dude. Or like when you when you get up there your first couple times, you know, mm-hmm. not to sound like some fucking veteran because I'm, I'm a beginner, but like, you know, when you get up there, you do what you think you should. You you're trying to be who you think you should be up there, and you're not trying mm-hmm. to be yourself yet. You know what I mean? You're just fucking. You're doing what you think it, you should be doing is good. You know what I mean? Like whoever, like when you when you get up there your first couple of times. At least I did. Like it was like I'm gonna be what I think should be funny. It's like no, nah, you need to just be you need to be honest. You just need to be yourself. You know? <laughs> I was I was trying to be me. It just wasn't good yet. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because I remember I posted I posted a video. Um, like I was like one of the first couple of times that it kind of I see it now. It's because I didn't, I didn't delete it. I don't care. I see it now. It's like, whew, that was a that was a guy there. It's a confident guy, but <laughs> the jokes, right? <laughs> yeah, the confidence was key. I put it like that. The yeah, confidence, the, you've yeah. seen me on stage. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> and we're we're both like let's say we both keep doing this for years. We're both gonna look back on what we're doing now oh, and be like, oh god. Can't even watch this, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it'll be so much more evolution, you right. know. So, you know, that's how that's how it always is. But it's kind of like that with sobriety too. Hmm. Um, it's the same shit. Like when everybody first gets sober, like the people that need to, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like me. Like when you first like start like working a program, like being an AA or whatever. Like when you're mm-hmm. new, like I've been sober for 17 years. So it's been a long fucking time. But when I was new everybody goes through that same kind of quote unquote new guy thing where um, you're like, I need to get sober as fuck. I need to get in a good headspace. I need to get well. I need to get money. I need to be successful. I need to be a new person. I need to get cleaned up. And it's like, dude, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. Yep, everything is one step at a time. Yeah. Yep. And you can't speed up time. You can't speed it up. You can't slow it down. You, you just have to live through it. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing with, with comedy man it's just it's a marathon it's not a sprint you're gonna have yep. to just fucking live through it it's a grind and stay stay with it dude but it's if you really love it it's addictive oh, it's enjoyable grind like, it's enjoyable because it's addictive dude. um like it's a fu- it's fun can i can i say my typical schedules yeah yeah you do whatever yeah yeah i work eight to five um and like auto for auto finance company uh, work from home right now, but I go in the office occasionally, uh, like once a week. Uh, so eight to five, and I get off of there, and then I go drive Uber Eats from like six to like nine, and then I'll go hit Mike's and try to get home by like one o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Fucking, uh, yeah, you're definitely going to be putting that time in for sure, dude. It's fucking, uh, it really is crazy, but. Every every it's minute fun, of it is fun, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause like I told myself, let me see how much funnier I can be in a year than when I, when I started. Like, let me give myself a year, and I'm I'm so addicted already that it hasn't. Even, I haven't even hit a year yet, and I can already tell I'm gonna keep going when I get there because I'm enjoying it so much, you know. Oh yeah. But you know, I mean, it's just like with anything. You know, you talk to people that have been doing it for years, and you just have to live through. You have to just suffer through the growing pains. I think is the way to do it like you because know, you my point is like if you've been doing it for years it's easy to get jaded it's easy to fucking you know you know get uh you know resentments and all this stuff but i think you just have to like just keep doing it you know and yeah and for me it's like you have to enjoy the the process yeah if you don't enjoy the process itself then it's gonna that's what's gonna make it like oh this sucks this is a grind i got him this again but like for me like i enjoy the process i enjoy the actual aspect of doing it like you said you played music got i was playing music for years oh really i don't know if we ever talked about that what did you do um i'm a percussionist i like uh i was a band i was a band geek. oh yeah we you were, were you drum line yeah i was on drum we line. talked about this we did talk about this front ensemble and i taught uh drum line paradiddles and, yeah, right, left, right, right, man. Yeah, <laughs> triple, <laughs> um, double, triple. And now, yeah, I had a. I was in college on. I was in college on a band scholarship. 
Oh hell yeah, dude! Yeah. No, that's the real deal. Yeah, I played drums for twelve years, man. My okay, first, yeah, my yeah. first set was a premiere, and then um, my uh, my last drum kit that I had was uh, mm-hmm. Pearl Export Series because that was uh, Vinnie Paul from Pantera. Mm-hmm. That was the same drum kit, and I really wanted to have the same that he had. Um, and then I switched to vocals. Like when I was in my early twenties, I made the transition from being the drummer in bands to like being the singer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, I got I played drums for a long time man oh, yeah. i never did like drum line i couldn't do that shit i didn't do like the full-on band stuff yeah no i feel you yeah but i but i played drums no yeah my dad plays my sister played um so i started i had a drum set when i was like six i like one of those like little kitty ones like a red one mm-hmm. and i went to california one like uh christmas or summer and i came back and my, it was gone my dad was like it's, it's too small for you uh, but I was I was in band within like a, a couple of years after that and I still I drummed at church and everything but then yeah I was in band and did band for like 15 years oh yeah dude yeah man um, yeah it's fun stuff mm-hmm. and it's a workout percussion oh, yeah. like you to get cardio in along with Heck playing yeah. an instrument yeah and especially on drum line it's like alright go throw this uh, 60 pound weight on your chest and and run around Seriously. in time. Don't you don't j- just jazz run around. Just run around at a certain speed <laughs> for yeah, like yeah. for ten minutes or prepare to do it for ten minutes. So we're gonna do it for three hours. Seriously, <laughs> in one hundred and three degrees. It's just crazy, dude. That's in Texas, crazy. they take it mad serious too. It was fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. That's uh, no. That's that's a serious thing. I mean, you know, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it takes some, some dedication. Cause that, that becomes more of like, it's more of like a sport at that level. Oh yeah. It's know? a, that's, I will say it helped me. That's like how I, that's the only way I got, not the only way, but like, cause my parents were responsible. Like that's the way I got structured though. Or like how I kept structure. Like, cause like I took AP, I was in like in AP classes and whatnot and stuff. But while I wasn't in band, like I would, I don't know, like uh, after I stopped playing sports, I would have been. I would have gotten bad, like worse grades because I wouldn't have to pass for band because <laughs> I could always ace a test. So homework was a thing that was just like, sometimes I would just forget it needed to be done. Yeah. So were you, would you say growing up and stuff all the way, like middle school, high school and stuff, were you quote unquote like a good kid or what were you, were you partying? Were you, um, what were you doing? No, I wasn't doing no kind of party or nothing. I was... I was bad comparative to my sisters, but uh-huh. I was good as a comparative to regular kids. Okay. Um, like, I, and I won't say even my parents wouldn't call me bad. Like, I got decent, I got really good grades up until middle school when I realized, like, I was like, oh, this is all like made. And when they, okay, I got good grades until they gave me percentages on grades. And I was like, okay, this is exactly how much I need to get a B or an A. Oh, and you mean instead of letter grades when they give you like the 80s and 90s and all that stuff? Well, that and they like had, they, they, when we start getting, when you start getting syllabuses at the beginning, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Seventh, seventh grade and you start getting the syllabus at the beginning of the year and it tells you that 50%, like 50% of test grades, this much is daily work and I know I'm going to get 100 on every single test in this class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm like, okay, that means I can do about half of this homework and I'll get, a, I'll get an 83. Yeah, you started realizing, <laughs> I was that oh, kid. yeah, I can get away with that. And then yeah. it's like, let me get this, I'll, I'll get an, I'll ace this project. And I was, I was, I, so I became that kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the lazy smart kid. That makes sense, dude. I, I was, I was kind of a version of that for a while, but see, I had this whole streak in me where it's like, dude, nah, man, I'm like, I'm, I'm a drummer. I'm playing bands. I'm going to party. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm going to fucking, you know, tour. I'm going to do, and I ended up doing all that stuff. Ironically though, is after I was already sober, you know, cause I got sober oh, yeah. super young, but no, at high school, man, I was fucking, I did, I did well in school enough to get by, but I didn't have an interest in it. I wasn't concerned with it. I was more interested in just fucking, playing drums and partying and getting fucked up with my friends and dude i got so i, I was constantly high constantly drinking constantly mm-hmm. fucking i was in an environment which is not a good environment looking mm-hmm. back like my my that was not like a fucking the worst thing ever but like it was unsupervised because i was living with my dad at that time my parents yeah. split up when i was like a little kid mm-hmm. so i was living with my dad at the time in his girlfriend's house Mm. and he didn't really he was at the time i thought it was cool because it's like yeah cool parents. The cool dad he's got the cool you do house. whatever you want yeah. yeah or you let your friends over and get fucked up looking back to now that i'm a parent it's like dude i would never do that you know what oh, i mean yeah. i would never do that so 
it, it wasn't a good environment, but at the time I thought it was amazing. And my friends were all like, yeah, we can go over and fucking party at this dude's house. We can get fucked up. So like I was fully involved in that. Um, I was definitely like uh, a kid who stole a lot, mm-hmm. you know, like I would like nothing crazy, you know what I mean? Like, but just like st- seeing what I get away with, like stealing cigarettes from the store, stealing candy, stealing yeah. shit and seeing how far I could push it without getting caught. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shit, dumb shit like that. And, um, yeah, man, just fucking testing the limits. And uh, I progressed into all that stuff. And then it kind of all came to a head when I was like 18, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And then that's when, you know, I was fucking doing like hard drugs, but this is all by choice. You know what I mean? I was doing hard mm-hmm. drugs. I was like, on the streets like you know fucking doing heroin and shit Mm -hmm. and uh you know once again my lifestyle was the reason i was there it wasn't because i was forced to be there or something like i had a loving home my mom you know just said hey if you're gonna be living your life like this and getting fucked up like this don't be in my house yeah you can't be around i mean because i have a sister who's a lot younger than me so she was like a little kid at the time yeah so she's like i have to raise her you can't be around you know so a lot of the stuff i was bringing on myself but yeah, I, I went way hard, way early, man. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? I feel you, bro. Yeah, dude. And uh, but I've it's that was a long time ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, that no, was a long time ago. I feel you. No, I like I never. I don't think I drank until I was like twenty one. You don't really drink? I barely. Mm. Uh, you know, I smoke a bunch of weed. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. But um. I didn't smoke until I was nine, like eighteen. I didn't smoke until I was in college. Okay, uh, but I was like a, a, around my friends who did. I was just always the person who was like, "Oh, every like I was the person who would just help." Like I was like, I drove like when I first got to college. I was like the designated driver for like years. I, I'll be high, but we're good. I'm not drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I but yeah, I under I understand that I was I'll say this, I push limits in different type of ways. If I like would have been in an environment like yours, I probably would have ended up doing the same type of stuff. Yeah, it was it was weird, man. I had a weird upbringing. I mean, and, and this isn't even really weird, like it's rare because I think a lot of people, especially in our generation, like a lot of people grow up in like divorced homes and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's more of a norm now than it was probably 20, 30 plus years ago. Yeah. But like I I definitely had like this weird like because my parents didn't get along after they split up it wasn't like an amicable thing where it was like hey yeah you go over here on this week and go over there on this week and everybody gets along yeah it was always tension just always, always tension conflict. always like i'm gonna go over here now you're gonna live with this and and once again i didn't have like there was a, there was neglect on my dad's side but it wasn't um it wasn't like a, like a treacherous thing. It's like I was abused or something like that. And my yeah. mom always had like a loving home and stuff like that. It was always great. It was just there was that tension. There was that divide, though. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And going back and forth. So uh, this got fucking serious, bro. I didn't mean to take it such a turn. <laughs> no, I fucking okay. make it a therapy session. It's yeah. It, 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 Shout out therapy. Therapy is important. People. Yeah. Mental health. Mental health is important. Yeah. It's expensive, though. They don't, they don't like to talk about that part. That's just yeah. expensive. Yeah, dude. <laughs> It is true. <laughs> My point is that Sorry. that allowed me to get into a bunch of fucking dumb shit, dude. I got so many fucking dumb things that happened, man. Fuck it. So you didn't really do any drugs or anything like in high school and stuff? Uh, not in high school. In college, yeah. Okay. But, uh, that's the normal. Th- that's when people are supposed to be uh, experimenting. Now, was it accessible? Yeah. Could I have gotten to it? Yeah. Like there was a Coke. A coke dealer that lived like right across the street from the house i hung out at every day after high school my senior year uh-huh and like we knew that like it was funny like we were there when they got raided uh, we watched from across the street it was good entertainment that day yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> suburban coke isn't it dealers. crazy to see shit like that yeah dude when i was so when, when i was 15 and uh this was a, a period of time when i was 15 when i was living at my mom's house and um so I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm like, uh, this is when I was starting to become like a big stoner. So I was smoking weed. I was mm. on the little back porch because my, my room had, was the door to the back porch. So you had to, if you wanted to go to the back porch, you had to come through my room. So yeah. I got to sneak outside and I was fucking smoking a bowl and I was fucking getting <laughs> super high. <laughs> so then I come inside. I'm stoned out of my mind, bro. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm a... Uh, my fucking uh, stepdad was out of town, so it was just me and my mom at the house. My sister was super, super little, so it was basically just me and my mom. And 
I hear like kind of like firecracker sounds when I cl- a couple minutes after I close the door when I came back in from smoking, <laughs> and um, and yeah, I remember, dude. I'm just I'm 15. I'm just starting to get a hold of good weed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm really young, right? And so I'm new to being a stoner, and I'm mm-hmm. just starting to get good shit. You know, so <laughs> I hear like firecracker sound like. You know, whatever it sounds to me it sounds like firecrackers or something weird and i don't pay it any mind because i'm stoned out of my mind and i'm paranoid about getting caught by my mom Facts. so i'm in there trying to fucking not make sure that all that smoke outside stays inside and make sure i don't smell like weed all the usual shit and then uh, <laughs> i go downstairs and watch a movie because i'm like oh, that's what i want to do get stoned watch a movie eat some munchies and that's it dude she comes down and she goes uh and she goes uh th- there's a cop here um, or she said like, you know, whatever the fuck she said, something like that. The cops are here. The police, it was a million years ago, but the cops are here and they want to ask you some things. And I'm thinking, I was, I'm stoned out of my mind. I'm thinking like someone saw me smoking weed. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm so paranoid, dude. And I go <laughs> up and the fucking cop is at the front porch and he goes like, did you hear any gunshots recently? <laughs> Have you heard any gunshots tonight? And I was like, dude, I'm so stoned out of my mind dude 15 fucking standing there fucking i'm like oh no i think i might have heard some firecrackers you know and like and then he was like okay and then like you know (laughs) he was just like that was it and um so then i he's like that's all and then i fucking went ran back just got away from the fucking police officer bro (laughs) went back to watch my movie then about a few minutes later after my mom closed the door she I found out and the comp told her mm. the reason why he was asking that and the reason what had actually happened. It wasn't firecrackers, dude. Yeah. My next door neighbor shot his brother full, like, you know, uh, what's called close range, like full on yeah. shot him a couple times, dude. Um, I don't think he killed him, but obviously he severely injured him. Yeah. And on top of that, dude, the cops, go into the house and then they end up searching it they they take fucking like t- a large i don't know how exactly much but a large amount of fucking heroin and all we find out this dude shot his brother but he's like a big time fucking uh hard drug dealer dang living right next door and this is a this is a nice neighborhood dude like this isn't fucking i i didn't grow up in the fucking projects oh yeah, this yeah is no. a nice neighborhood nice home oh, yeah, no. nice totally that's anonymous what, and i said well that's where the big ones that's live. where all they the high levels suburbs. live yeah yeah they got the money you know and, and this wasn't like fucking mansions or anything it was just a nice middle class nice, yeah. nice middle class stay neighborhood, out the way yeah. totally unsuspecting totally fine across the street from a fucking elementary school mm. so this guy next door dude just living there you know little little weird little bit of a character whatever kind of I mean, were, were there people there all the time so to once again man i was 15 i didn't pay attention you uh, know you don't really pay attention to that shit bro you know uh, and, i do well yeah and, and to be fair i hadn't been living my mom had just moved into that house oh okay recently so it was she'd only lived there for a few months a couple months or so mm. so um that was crazy though you know what i mean like that weird shit can happen i feel like and, and <laughs> i was thinking and obviously it's 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 got to be the effect of like the weed but i was would get really high when i did all the years i did smoke weed and wonder mm-hmm. why does weird shit always happen when i get high like why doesn't it but i think it's the fact that i'm high that i think it's weird i think the yeah, shit it's just probably, happens it's probably, it's probably about and it. then it the way that you, you know what happens, i mean yeah because I was like, why did the cop come to my door and all this fucking shit go down and the neighbor gets shot the night I decide to fucking try to smoke some bowls and hide it from my mom? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, why can't that happen when I'm not smoking? You know what I mean? <laughs> when I, was, but, when I was the universe telling you to put down the weed. Yeah, well, I didn't fucking listen, so. Yeah. If that was, I fucking failed that. I didn't hear that <laughs> message. But yeah, dude, it's, it's so weird because then I would think like, well, what the fuck? Like, but yeah, it's 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 not that. It's that's because you're high. I think, like you said, man, things just happen to you. Oh yeah, always. And then you think it's weird because you happen to be high when it happened to you. That was like when I would go smoke on this. Uh, our college, the college I went to, I went to a small college in the middle of nowhere in Arkansas. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And there was a nature trail, so you could just like walk through the woods. Cause like, okay, so this college was like super small. It's the cheapest school in all of uh-huh. the state of Arkansas, right? Um. But they actually had the most, the the second most land I think of any school in the state, huh. outside of you know big University of Arkansas or Fayetteville, because we had a, an agriculture program, so a bunch of that land was like you know 
cows and trees and junk. Uh, yeah, cows <laughs> not and in trees junk, and you know, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, barns and stuff. Yeah, forestry. And we had a we had like one of the best forestry schools. Okay, forestry got all the stuff. Um, but so we're in on. I'm on this nature trail. I'm smoking uh, uh, out there, and I swear, this uh, I swear this deer. Yeah, there's a deer like 45 feet away from me, and he sees me. He walks up to me, and then he runs away, and then he runs back to me. Fuck, that's right, so right. <laughs> right. And then he just watched. He watched me. The deer watched me. You know, deer are usually like afraid yeah. of things. And like I tried to make myself large, nothing happened. That's so. I weird, put my dude. weed away and went to the car and went <laughs> back home. I was like, "No, this is not my. This ain't my day, man." You this. get challenged by a fucking deer, dude. Yeah, like they got they got deer activities going on. He's I think he's just the guard for the rest of the deer activities. He's on the outskirts. Yeah, so I, that's why he won't let me make it past him. He went to, he went to go talk to them. And they came back and they told him to watch me. Oh, dude. Deer activities, man. I can't can't get involved. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck. That's that's weird, dude. Yeah, that's we would. Weird. Yeah, it was a really small school though. Yeah. We would get emails about not tipping cows and Ku Klux Klan rallies. No. Yeah, really? no, there's a cool yeah, we got there was a Ku Klux Klan rally in town because yeah, the police gave them an escort and everything. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. you, when told, you hear about yeah. a state like Arkansas, you think, oh, all that stuff's a stereotype and all that stuff, but fuck, shit's real, huh? In yeah. certain parts, right? Yeah, certain yeah, this is it's, yeah, just like anywhere, certain parts. Man, like there's there's places, there's still sundown towns in Arkansas, like direct like everybody like you get there and like they start telling you about it like when as soon as you get there don't don't be going through harrison at night wow yeah that was a direct reference i don't care wow i don't care i mean yeah fuck <laughs> they have white pride radio there wow that's <laughs> one of those is, places where that shit's fine, alive. to be honest freedom of speech you can have it i just don't want to listen to it well, yeah, yeah 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 for sure yeah yeah it, stereotypes are around for a reason man a lot of, a lot of them right like california for example right southern california especially right like because mm -hmm. you know about this are there the the classic cliche fucking like surfer Heck is yes. there is there the surfer dude that's like hey dude what's up man? yeah dude if you go to malibu or you go to orange county or whatever and you hang out like uh, on the beaches you're gonna see the stereotype fucking surfer guy that you see in movies yep. and on tv yes those guys do exist but that's a very small most people are not like that you Thanks. know what i mean most people are just like anywhere pretty much you know what i mean it's like regular if you go it's inland just, there's gonna be some people that are just like regular people that you could see anywhere but yes does that exist yeah, absolutely it does you know what i mean but is it like the norm no i mean in a very small section it is you know what I mean? oh yeah 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 like if I if I'm if I'm just particularly on the beach in San Diego all day, yeah, I'm gonna see a guy. Yeah, you'll see the stereotypical <laughs> surfer guy that you would think of if you watched a movie or something. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. But other than that, no, I'm gonna see if I'm in L. A. If I'm downtown, I'm gonna see a lot of homeless people. Oh, yeah, that's if I'm the in Hollywood. I'm gonna now. see a lot of homeless people. That's why I left. <laughs> fucking one of these. God, it's so out of control. Um, and if I'm in South Central, I'm gonna see my people. So I'm good. <laughs> I'm straight down there, I'm good. God, if I was in Compton. Yeah, dude. Well, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. So certain things exist, but then you know, it's. I think the stereotype thing comes into effect when it generalizes and makes like I think everybody. Well, uh, yeah, the the thing the 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 thing. So like humans as a as a brain like as a, a processing mechanism of the world, we categorize. We do that to everything. True. So other humans will automatically be included in this. Where we get into trouble with it. Uh, as far as how we end up treating other people is when we take uh, we take an assumption and automatically apply it to any given group of people uh, and let that determine how we're going to treat that person before that person has a chance to show whether they yeah. fit that would the fit the preconceived notion or not. Yeah, you know, true, true. And if you've already determined that that person is said preconceived notion, then then that's all they're going to be to you at that point yeah. whatever that is yeah 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 Being, no for sure yeah well one thing that's interesting about that though is that like because you know like you're talking about you listen to the episode with chris and me and him we're talking about like car sales shit um mm -hmm. at the same time though dude like credit score for example 
most of the time, obviously there's exceptions to the rule because there's identity theft. There's people that maybe they, they weren't given a lot of chances. So then they kind of like, maybe they didn't have a good example. They haven't had like been educated on shit. So then they fucked up their credit because just because of the ignorance, they just didn't know, you know, how to get good credit or whatever. Oh yeah. So but, that's financial literacy isn't public. Isn't it's something isn't, you have it's to not learn. common knowledge. It's something you have to learn. It's not, yeah, it's not yeah. common sense. Yeah. And if you grow up in a house where people teach it to you, then naturally you're going to be more inclined to have it. Right. Yeah. And, and if you don't have it, then you got to learn it. I didn't have it. I didn't have parents that were conscious of that shit, yeah. you know? So I had to learn how to do all that. Right. Um, and I know that's the case for some people. It's not the case for others. But my point is if you're a full blown adult, I'm not talking about if you're really young, I'm saying like, if you're like into your twenties, if you're thirties, forties, it's insane, dude how the credit score can fucking really show what kind of person the person is, bro. Cause <laughs> like, I'm like have, dealing with finance and all that shit. You look at someone's file before you even, before you oh, even meet yeah, them, yeah. you see their credit score, you see their history and shit and like how they paid or didn't pay for shit. Nine times out of 10, you can see what kind of person it's going to be. And I'm not talking about someone's like race or gender. Oh, well, that's, I'm talking yeah, about the, the behavior. Well, cause well, okay. Well, now we're talking about evaluating credit history. But yeah, yeah. I work in finance. Like yeah, you know what's up. <laughs> I understand. So you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like when you're evaluating credit history, but that's 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 going in terms of you can see this person chose when their money got tight. This is what they chose not to pay, or whether or this looks like that money wasn't even tight. They just they literally okay. They're taking out new cards and just maxing them out, and we're just where they got as many. They got six cards at once. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and ran, ran them all out and then and then make minimum payments on them for for the for yeah. this. <laughs> well cuz it is crazy it, cuz it comes down to behavior. It comes down to like what kind of you can tell how the person it's so amazing, dude. Like you can tell what kind of person the person's going to be if they have like substantial history, like what their score is, like is going to determine you can almost 9 times out of 10, you can see what kind of behavior they're going to have. Like well, here's an example. Like let's say there's some little like address discrepancy and we have to verify it. So you need to like approve address or something, mm -hmm. dude, the guy who has a 400 credit score that has shit credit is going to take forever to get you that bro. You got to make three calls, leave two voicemails, send three text messages, dude. And then maybe a week later, they'll send it to you. The guy who has an 800 credit score, dude, you say you need something. They're going to send it to you that day and call you twice the next day to make sure it went through and shit. It's just like, they're checking on shit. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? And the person who doesn't have good credit is just like, yeah, whatever, dude. It's so funny how that can directly show you like how someone behaves. Now, once again, identity theft is a thing. So maybe someone has a bad credit score because their identity was stolen and then all that shit. I'm not saying, and some people get set up before they even turn 18. If you got the same, yeah. some people get set up, they only got the same name as their parents. They had an electric bill when they was three. Yes, yeah. Yeah, true. That's why I said like when you're really young, it's one thing. But like when you talk about like full blown adults that have had their own history for for a long time, you know what I mean? You you can see like ah, dude, I know exactly how this. Is. Or let's say they don't have a lot of credit because they are really young. You're like ah, I know exactly how this person's gonna act. You know what I mean? And then sure enough, they come in there just like oh, you know what I mean? It's so funny how you can tell that shit based on a lot of the time. It exists for a reason. Is my point because it really does show. A lot of the time, the character of a person, at least at that point in time, you know, because I've been that guy with bad credit, you know what I mean? And like, I've, I acted differently then, you know what I mean? Than I do now, you know? So I don't know why this turned into a financial podcast all of a sudden, but oh, I don't know. Well, because of me, it's my <laughs> fault. But. I don't know. Uh, I'm not saying, yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, well, if you're looking at all the, at all of it, but yeah, some people there's the, there's just the exceptions that people get in weird situations. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Like, I had great credit uh, until I blew out my wheels. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have decent credit though. Like, I don't. Know. My credit no, it's terrible. true, man. Because if you, if you're if but you American medical system is a is a it's a bitch. It's, it's a whore. No, you're right, dude. Because <laughs> everything can be going well. Then you get if you got a shitty insurance or no insurance, you get caught just wrong place, wrong time. You have some health issues. The bills stack up. You can't pay them. All of a sudden, you're in for thousands, thousands of dollars that you don't have the money to pay. They send you collections. Bam, out of your control. Hundred percent, man. All that stuff can happen. Once again, dude, I don't know how he turned it into this fucking credit karma fucking podcast. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. But if you wanna, you wanna check out the Financial Bros. We're here every Wednesday. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you, uh, do you got any shows coming up or anything like that? 
Uh, I'll be at Addison Improv on January oh, yeah. 19th. Nice. On, with uh, Pung Dung and Friends. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can check that out on my Instagram. I'll be uh college near you soon, hopefully with Trey Mack. We were at a, a McMurray University. 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 <laughs> McMurray uh, University in Abilene, like uh, a couple, a few weeks ago. That was great. Um, and then I did Laredo College earlier this year. And that was really good, too. So, Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Right on, man. We'll go and check that out. And then, uh, yeah, man, once I get the full fucking thing going here, man, I'll have to have you back next year because oh, I yeah. still got to put the TV up and I got to put the rest of the sound padding up. But oh. it's coming together, man. There's a bunch oh, of yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Look, you got a sign in You got here. a fucking sign and everything, bro. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, are we about to end? Yeah. Well, I think so. I'm oh, fucking okay. tired. Well, yeah. Addison Improv, <laughs> January 19th. It's a Wednesday. Follow me on Instagram. I'll put you on a list. You can get them for free, man. You can get them for free 99. Come hear these jokes. They're great. They're wonderful. He can vouch for me. I'm pretty funny. Yep, I'm pretty yep. funny. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, man. And Punk Dong is funny. And uh, who else is on that show? Diego Rangel's on that show. Um, and a multicultural yeah, cast of people, man. Yeah. Diego's That's an improv. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming by. Everybody that's been listening and supporting, really appreciate it so much. Uh, as you can see, I'm starting to embrace the video and the YouTube side of it, which is the whole point of getting everything fully effect and multi cameras and all that shit. Um, so if you don't, uh, if you only listen to the podcast, that's awesome. Yeah, I love everybody who listens to it. But if you do want to check out the video, because I'm starting to do all the multi camera and stuff, and it's going to be running at 100% soon. So let's uh, just, in the meantime, keep building Crux Nation. Crux. Woo! Yeah, motherfuckers. Let me hear you say Crux, yeah! Crux, yeah! Let me hear you say Crux, yeah! Crux, yeah! Crux, yeah podcast. Crux, proper! You a clown chasing fake and that's industry dick swallow. I can give a fuck about you and your fake followers. Posting on your story 